heard. Can I get a, can I get a thumbs up? Is it okay for me to be recording? Can I get an okay, Immaculate and Tabitha and Sharon? Okay. Sharon, is that okay? Yeah? Yes, it's okay. Tabitha, is that okay? I can't hear you. Tabitha, are you muted? No, you're not muted. It's okay with Okay. <laughs> All right. So, hey, Maureen. Hey. Hello, Maureen. Hi. 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 Um, so, Tabitha and Immaculate and Maureen, if you can, we'd love to see you as well since we're here and showing our videos as well, which sometimes can feel intimidating to us too. And um, we'd love to see you if you can. Um, and we'd love to hear your feedback on some of the things that you might have thought at the beginning of the program uh, and it, maybe how they shifted. So maybe we could start with, what do you think we should start with Sharon? Well, um, I'd like, probably they can tell us what they think, what they thought coaching was all about when they were starting, yeah. Hello. Oh, we went to see the baby. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. Mm. Can you send her, send her to me? <laughs> Sorry, Sharon, I'm totally sidetracking us from the topic. <laughs> beautiful. Love that. All right, so I think that was a great question, Sharon. So what did, what did people think maybe at the beginning of what coaching kind of was or what it wasn't or what it was gonna be like? And then maybe if those, if did that change for you or did it stay the same? We'd like to hear from you all, from the people who were the clients in the program. Painful. Hey, I'm sorry. Go for it, Faith. So, uh, uh, for me, I thought, honestly, I thought coaching was what I see in the movies. <sighs> yeah, you have to open up and cry a lot and get angry at <laughs> the coach. Yeah, it was, for me, I just had this stupid idea about movies, you know. And then I met this beautiful lady called Izzy. Oh my God, everything was just amazing. And then the first week she told me, every day I want you to send me a message of something you're proud of. Something that happened that day and you're proud of it. Yeah. And then she also told me, I send a message of what I love most about me. And my idea of what coaching was and what was really happening was were just two different things. Yeah. It was just about me, about my growth, yeah, my self-love. Everything was just about me. And honestly, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Beautiful. So it started out as kind of that's so interesting that it was something that you'd seen in the movies that and it sounds like it was like really emotional in the movies that you that you saw is that right <laughs> yeah it sounded like a bit that you thought it's uh, some kind of you know therapy where yeah. we go through all yeah all the emotions yeah. it's interesting and instead it was much more about the yeah, maybe growth. Like that's what I heard you say that it was about me, that it was about me and, and kind of my growth and my stuff, which is very, that's interesting that that was, there was a shift that was there for you. Yeah. Like you empowering yourself, you know, mm, interesting. All right. Tabitha and Maureen and Immaculate, you've now had time to think about it. Thank you, Faith, for going first. 
who else had a, can remember what were your kind of feelings or thoughts about coaching at the beginning and how have they you have they shifted now or have they not Okay, to me, my coach was Marika. <laughs> and what, whatever I expected, she delivered. And all through the session, I learned a lot. We were, doing about, we were talking about business. And she really gave me a lot of things that I'm supposed to think about before going ahead, starting a business. Yeah, and I think I learned a lot from her. So that's interesting. So your coaching was much more focused on on kind of business coaching. That's what I'm hearing from you. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. That's nice. Yeah. Is it what you, when you first thought, you know, kind of were introduced to this program and heard about it, uh, is this is it kind of like what you thought it was going to be? Is it about the same as what you thought it was going to be? Yes. Whatever I thought, I, I got everything that I expected. So what are the main things that you expected from the program? Mm, okay, first, the, okay, I needed someone who can bring me into how I'm supposed to. You see at times when you're doing business, you don't know yourself. You have a lot of self-doubt. You tend to wonder, am I really fit for doing this? But during the program, I was, Marika led me through. I was able to know what I'm supposed to, the goals I'm supposed to, to, to meet in my business and so many other things. <laughs> Thank you, Immaculat. And I feel many times when we do talk about, you know, business and coaching together, it's something that is external. And actually, it's about what's inside. And, and like, uh, it's so wonderful to, as a coach to be able to, to be to support you to look inside and, you know, so what what does this mean when I look inside and then I look at this dream that I have and you know what is, what is coming out inside of me and not from the external world and that was also super interesting for me to work with you. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. That kind of like what's internally also really, you know, inside each one of us really impacts our business stuff as well. That's what I'm hearing from you too, Marika. Is that right? Yeah, because it's, um, if we go to a business, you know, we want to have, a, we have an idea and, and if we only do it because of the, you know, the external, I don't know, expectations, or we just want to be as, as successful as someone is somewhere, we might go to the wrong direction because we need to look inside as well. And like, so what is my dream? You know, how do I want to make this yeah, real? Really yeah. 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 How do you feel about that immaculate? Um, yeah. Okay. You know, we exp you know, at first I thought starting a business, you just have to wake up, set up a business and it's supposed to run. But you know, you have so many things, you have to find the value propos proportions, how your customer relations, such so small petty things, but they matter a lot in the, your business. But you see me, I thought it's just so easy. The customers will just come flowing, but you don't even know whether your, the activities you're doing, you don't, I didn't even know who am I targeting, but during the program, I learned so much. Really cool. That's so interesting that, um, so from what Faith said, it sounded like her coaching was really focused on kind of her, her, her stuff that was on the inside and her, you know, what was growing for her very specifically there and Immaculate. It's really interesting. It sounds like you came to this with a, like, I want to start a business and how, what is it that I need to kind of discover 
around this in order to, to do that. Um, and I think it, that's really interesting to me that, that it was this, it's the same program and it really sort of was able to, you know, hook into and meet the needs of both of you, which it sounds like they're a little bit different. Yeah. All right, Tabitha and Maureen, how about you guys? How about you two? What did you, what, did you have anything that you felt like at the beginning um, uh, that maybe were some of your assumptions around what coaching would be like and what would be there? And that did that, any of that change for you? Did it not change? Like what, I don't know what happened throughout this. I just, I'm super curious about what, what's been going on behind the scenes because, you know, I haven't been there. So it's, I'm curious about what happened for you in your coaching experience. Uh, for me, it was uh, not what I expected. Okay, uh, I think I was overthinking it and maybe feeling like it's some kind of therapy. I have to maybe be having some challenges so that I can be able to talk to a coach. And immediately I started talking to this wonderful lady called Julie. It was totally different. And uh, she was really nice and talked about my job, talked about my personal life. And it was really good. I didn't have to experience maybe like a challenge in life so that I can be able to talk to her. It was really easy flowing and I really liked it and appreciated it a lot. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so this is interesting that like I felt like I needed to have a problem, you know, to like solve a problem in order to have the coaching thing, um, which is, you know what, yeah. I mean, that was, that was my frame around coaching for so long. I felt that same way. I, that's what I thought coaching was for so long. Um, and yeah, so, okay. So then I would say like, what did, what did you discover or what came from the coaching? If there wasn't like a, hey, I have a problem, let's sort of sort through this problem and solve it, which sometimes when I go to coaching, I, I definitely have like, yes, I need help with this one specific thing. Um, but when we don't have that, it's, it's another really interesting, cool place that's possible there. Um, and so I, wanna, I, would, I'm, I would love to hear from you, what are your words about kind of maybe what opened up for you or what happened for you, um, what you found through this? Uh, I found that uh, coaching was really interesting and maybe if I had, a, I was maybe experiencing some challenges at work and I would talk to Julie, it would help me cope with the problem and come up with some solutions. She was really good at trying to push me to do something in a good way and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. and uh, be able to communicate with my colleagues, with my boss. It was really interesting. I liked it very much interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful how uh, this is, I feel like it's a third perspective to coaching. Like we can, as coaches, help our clients to navigate through different kind of, uh, uh, you know, things related to issues at work, at home, relationships. And, and yeah, yeah, love that. <laughs> well, um, for me, what's interesting with coaching is the, the fact that you think you're okay when you're starting. And then as uh, you continue speaking, which is the case in so many ways, then you realize there's a reason as to why you do the things you do. So you actually have probably something you've never dealt with you didn't even know it's there in your life. But with the coaching, you start realizing there's actually something that I need to deal with. Or there's, there's a, it's not really a problem, but it's something that I need to handle. Like for me, maybe childhood trauma. So I have things that happened in the past that have molded me to be who I am or act the way I do or do the things I do. So when I started coaching, when you started, you start actually thinking about it and discovering, hmm, 
I need to handle this, or I need to work on this. And I think that's the one thing. We always think that there needs to be a problem at that point for you to go for coaching. Well, when you start coaching, you actually start realizing, you actually think you have probably not dealt with in your past or just in your life. Yeah. I love that. Does anybody else feel sort of that same way that what Sharon just said there? Uh, yes. Uh, for me, something like the sabotage that we normally have. I didn't know something like that. I mean, I knew uh, that little voice in your head. It's your instinct telling you, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. I didn't know it's, there's something called sabotage. I, I didn't know. Honestly, I, when I came to realize there's something like that, I think I listened more to my, my positive inner voice and try to shut down this other negative voice that is in my head yeah and often we also think that the the voice is ours it's my voice and then suddenly we start to notice have that awareness of, of what voice is my truth and what voice is not i love that yeah yeah, so I have a really strong saboteur around wanting to please other people, and especially people that I feel like might be in authority positions towards me. Uh, and so that's one that it's been helpful for me to actually even realize that uh, and to go into uh, situations where I realize that there's actually not really a right answer, uh, that it just has a lot more to deal with what's coming up for me in, in that moment, you know? And I, I love that because then it doesn't become about me pleasing, you know, other people. It becomes about what is it that I am supposed to do in this situation? You know, what am, what am I being kind of called to do maybe even in this situation too? So kind of recognizing that for me has been something like when Maureen's articulating, like I don't have to have a quote unquote problem or whatever, um, that it's helpful for me to, to just know that I have those things inside of me so that I can make sure that I'm really going towards the, the goals that I'm wanting to achieve in my life and that I'm actually making progress towards them too. All right, Tabitha, with that, we haven't heard from you. I would like to hear your experiences as well. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Ah, amazing. So my name is Tabitha. Uh, when I started the program, I, I had high expectations that it's going to be a program where I'm able to attend the sessions every day consistently. But unfortunately, somewhere along the way, I, I fell out. This is because the sessions I had in my job and my family, they kept crashing. So at some point I wasn't able to, to follow it up, but I had this amazing coach called Estelle. And we, the few sessions that I had uh, were really amazing. And um, one of the things that we were working on were my, my personal, uh, pretty much my personal life and my personality, because I, I realized that I'm a very sensitive person or very emotional person. So, and I pick energies from anybody and everybody about, around me. So I find myself that if I'm next to a person or somebody who's radiating negative uh, vibrations I easily pick that up and uh, it's something I had been struggling with and also the self-sabotage it's something that uh, I really had so the few sessions I had honestly she really helped me be able to recognize who I am and yes sensitivity is part of my personality and I have to accept it that way and there's nothing much I can ab do about it. But the more I understand myself, the more I can make it work for me. Because it goes to a place where 
the sensitivity will get so much in between me and the people I'm working with, me and my family, me and my friends. But the more I realized how it affects me and how I can deal with it, how I can live through it so that I can grow in it, uh, I, I really, it really helped me and it has helped me to maintain my relations at work, at with friends, my family. So the few sessions I had, they were very good. I am happy, but I just feel bad that I wasn't able to complete because of my job. Yeah, I think so far, so far, yeah, that way. That was my experience. Thank you, Papitha. It's so important to, uh, I'm also very emotional and at some points in life, I felt that there's something wrong with me because I'm emotional, showing emotions. And then now later on, <clears throat> being an adult, I've learned that it's totally okay to, and it's healthy to have those emotions and, you know, it's important to accept ourselves. Like I hear what you have uh, perhaps uh, learned uh, with, with Estelle when, when you have been uh, in the coaching process with her. So that's super important. And I also hear about the boundaries, like this is me accepting myself. And then we can have those healthy kind of boundaries with other people. And perhaps it also helped to kind of, uh, have that flexibility, not always to, you know, take in the emotions of others, like holding a bit of a boundary there. I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's what I heard. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Right? I'm, I'm hearing from her because I also think I'm also very emotional. And uh, so I used to try to not be too emotional for other people. We tend to not be too emotional, but to set your emotion aside. And then when you actually learn to work with it, it's actually better because you're being you. Not being emotional is not you. So when you're emotional, you're just being you and accepting you, which is it's a good feeling. Yeah. 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 And I just had one question for Tabitha. <laughs> Tabitha, would you like to probably do it again or resume your coaching? Yeah, sure. I wouldn't mind. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I actually wouldn't mind. But the other challenge I had, because Estelle was really helpful, and um, I don't know how I'm going to get help with this. So every time I would miss a session, because maybe my nanny is off and I have to take care of the kids, and they're all over. I have two under twos, should I call them like that? I have a two-year-old and a one-year-old. So when they decide to be up, I can't do anything else. <laughs> so I can, I found myself that the only day I have off, that's on a Sunday, that's when my nanny is going off. So I have the kids and every time I would miss a session, because of me and my sensitivity and my emotions, huh, I would feel that I have really let her down and actually get afraid to reach out and say, hi, um, no, we can do this again. I used to see like, um, I feel like I am now becoming a burden. I missed last time, this time round, I'm starting late. I, I, I don't know. It's something I'm, I'm struggling with. I don't know how to do it. So with that, I find myself being afraid to commit. I know that's, that's a basis of a coaching, right? Yeah. So I don't, I just don't know how to go about it at all. I don't know, but I would love to get help. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, first thing first, something I'm also learning is it's, it's okay. If you're not able to attend a session, just communicate because it's okay. Life happens. Sometimes we really want to, but life really happens to anyone or everyone. So it's just okay to communicate and don't feel bad. Yeah. And also think that that's an agreement you can have with your coach as you start. Yeah, but it's actually okay. I really understand what you're saying when you're talking about feeling guilty. So sometimes you do, you feel like you're feeling that other person or probably they're showing up and they're not showing up. But it's it's okay as long as you just communicate because you wanted to, but you just couldn't. So it's okay. You shouldn't feel guilty about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I must say that I, I missed the session and mm. I felt so guilty because I'm the coach and I was just, you know, rowing on a lake. And then I went, oh my God, I have a coaching session with Immaculate. I'm so sorry. You know, I'm in the middle of the lake. <laughs> what can I do? So it happens and it's so, um, you know, it's, uh, it's how the world works. You know, sometimes we have too much of something and then we, then we reschedule, postpone, or we say that, hey, now my life looks like this. How can I survive? Help me. Or, hey, could we, could we you know, have a one month break or something? Because this is, this is a, you know, the coaching relationship, the bubble, the container we are creating together. It's a great place, hopefully, to practice saying no <laughs> and, you know, negotiating and, you know, showing, showing fully authentically, you know, what's going on in life. So, mm. yeah. Tabitha, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Do you, do you perchance, have the experience of um, people really wanting your help with stuff and people kind of coming to you when they, um, when they want some help with things? Uh, yes, yes. So I've never met you before and you have incredibly inviting energy. Just being here, even when you speak, it's like, I just want to, I just want to talk back to you. Like, it's very, it's very, I want to look at this conversation that you started here um, amongst us as well. And how much we were all just very drawn in by your, um, by your openness and that vulnerability that's there. And what I would say, and your, your invitation even to just be open about it and be like, here's what happened with me. Um, that I would say in my experience that sometimes that can, it can be hard to keep boundaries then and say, no, I'm going to make sure that I'm honoring my own stuff because there are so many people that might want things from you. So um, I'm just, I'm reflecting. It's just been, it's really, honestly, it's fascinating for me to, to see that impact that you're creating even on this group here uh, and how powerful that impact is as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, honestly, for me, um, some of the things that I find myself dealing with, uh, I feel like I give, I am a giver. Should I say I'm a giver? Yes. I'm more of a giver. I keep giving out energy. The more I get, the more I give out. And it gets at some point in life where I feel like I have given out too much. Now I, I need to be given. I need to refill. So with that and the, that moment when I can't give out, I'm trying to re-energize myself and somebody comes and they need my help and I can't, oh man, that, that, that puts me down, for real, yes. I very much understand this, really, honestly, I do, me personally. Um, and yeah, yeah, I totally get that. So uh, I think that it's, it's, it can be hard to keep boundaries when we have that kind of energy that is just, for some reason, people look at us and say, oh, I want your help with something, or I want to be a part of you. I'm, you're very magnetic. I want to kind of be around you. Um, and it can be really hard to, to honor our own boundaries of me. I'm going to take my space and make sure I'm taking care of myself too. And what, you know, in coaching, sometimes I notice that my clients want to please me. And I would, I, I directly tell that to them if I notice, because the, the coaching, the process, the relationship, that's for the client. And I'm, I have been a big pleaser and I, I, I'm working on that every, every moment still now to keep my boundaries and in coaching uh, we are there to serve our clients and uh, also perhaps uh, you know the, perhaps we 
hopefully we succeed in being also the mirror for the client to notice that, oh my God, <laughs> you know, they don't need to please us, you know, you don't need to please us. And I, it's a, at least for me personally, because I, of course, have worked with the coach as well. It has been a great uh, learning to, you know, hey, this person is the one to whom I can, you know, directly say that, no, doesn't work for me. <laughs> And this is, of course, we, we need to know each other. We, uh, there's a trust, hopefully, growing up. And, you know, when we are in the coaching. Yeah, what was the point in this? But anyway, I just recognize all this as a client and then as a coach that, you know, there's a lot of going on. It's a relation, human relationship as well. So. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Maureen and Immaculate, I'd like to hear your take on what, what we are talking about. We came to your session, you see, you've been there. Uh, I remember the first time I had the session and uh, I was like five minutes late and I was really worried and I felt like I've disappointed my coach because I'm five minutes late. It's the first session. I'm already late. How will that portray about me? What will she think? Maybe she'll think I'm not serious with life. And uh, immediately I, I started the session and I really apologized. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm late or what? And she was like, it's okay. I understand. Uh, maybe you are busy with something. It's it's okay. It's okay to be late. But I remember I was really worried that I'm disappointing her. Yeah. Can I ask Maureen, did you have any assumptions about having a coach from a different country? That did you like did you think anything about how you might have a coach from a different country and and you know did any of those assumptions play out or did they not play out like did you have any assumptions about that do you know what i'm trying to say i don't know if i articulated yeah that. yeah yeah I, I, at some point i did uh, and i remember i was not comfortable at the first time uh doing a video session with her and she was, oh, it's okay, no problem, whenever you're comfortable. And I felt like maybe we won't understand each other, maybe her language will be too difficult for me, or maybe my language will be too difficult for her, my English. And uh, I, I, later on, I realized, ah, we can communicate really well. And uh, yeah, <laughs> but my assumptions were thrown out of the box. Really? Is that true? Is that right? Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. You know, the first time I came to Kenya, I totally, oh my gosh, I had so many assumptions. I had so many assumptions around what it was going to be like and what people were going to think about me and, you know, all of that stuff. And it's been uh, really like the more, and you know, I've lived all over the world. I've lived in a lot of different countries. And so Every, I swear, every single time we go to a new country, I've got a whole new list of assumptions about what that thing, you know, what that's going to be like. And then it's really interesting to then live there. And some of the assumptions actually then kind of play out as, yeah, that was actually the way that it, it, it was. And some of them just really don't. So it's cool to, to see that. And I'm glad that you were able to have an experience of hanging out with someone from a different country and, and being able to to see the kind of, I guess, the commonalities that were there, or at least form that relationship with each other, yeah? It's so funny, uh, Maureen, I exactly have the same, uh, or I had the same assumption as you. I'm not native uh, English speaker, and then with other not native English speakers, sometimes it gets messy, <laughs> and I'm like, will I be enough good coach when we, you know, you know if or will there be any language barriers and and there were none I think <laughs> so yeah it's so funny how our mind really plays the tricks there to act, sometimes like trying to pre prevent us doing something really exciting you know 
and then when we just decide to do it it's like okay that was nothing we can throw that belief away and you know go forward yeah. I mean, fun enough for me it was totally the opposite i was very excited to meet somebody else who's not from my country and I remember after our first session, I, was, I had all this idea the way I'm going to invite her to Kenya, I'm going to take her around Kenya, and at some point she's going to invite me to her country, and we're going to have a good time. That, that, actually, that's all that had been running through my mind all this time, that we're going to hit a very good bond at that. We're going to meet up at some point. So I, for me, I didn't have that fear of how uh, how are you going to communicate how will she view me how will I view her well, for me I was eager I was very curious to see and when I, I met her virtually online I was happy actually I was very excited like a, like a small girl yes <laughs> wonderful <laughs> awesome Immaculate I want to hear about you did you have some assumptions about Marika I know it's hard when she's here, isn't it? But it's okay. She won't feel that. <laughs> uh, okay, for me, I was also so excited meeting her, getting to know her. But at, at the end, I think it became a bit tougher since I was a bit tired. By that time, I was pregnant and I was a bit tired and we had to meet and talk. At times, I don't feel like but you know, I think even me, I was trying to, but I was trying my best. It it felt very uh, natural and and easy um, to meet with you, Immaculate. It was, uh, I think, it's the curiosity you hold, and perhaps I hold as well. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And as a coach, yeah. it's like you you had you had a baby now in the autumn, so it was like, okay, how can I be there for her? You know, she's having the baby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, but I was excited all through, and at least I made I made a friend out of her. Ooh. Yes, yeah, you yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I love that. That's a beautiful Amakia. I, you know what? I'm really good friends with all of my coaches that I have had. Every single one of my coaches. I am now, when even though we're not in that coaching relationship anymore, um, I've maintained a really close friendship with all of them. So that's an invitation for all of all of you here that are here that were part of the program to maintain that friendship as well with the with your coaches because because you I don't know it's such a special relationship to have a coach and to to be the client at least it is for me uh, mm -hmm. and I, I feel like I don't want to I don't really want to say goodbye goodbye to the person I want to you know make sure that they're still part of my life as well yeah. yeah that's the best for feeling me, yeah for me i feel like coaches are like my coaches are the, like my biggest cheerleaders they're just there cheering me on all the way so i don't want to to end it because i really want someone who continuously share me on when i do something which is a really good feeling because this person knows where you are and understands where you're going to go. So you can actually even tell her the little steps you're making. And that person is just share you up to Quinty and continue. So I really like that about having a coach. Yeah. I love that okay. image of the cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have five more minutes. So we're going to wrap it up here really quickly. Can I ask, could we all, if possible, turn on our videos just for a second so we could have like a really quick hi, so we can see everyone, just a really quick hi. It's okay if you have babies, hi, hello. Maureen, can you turn yours on? Hi. Hey, hey. so nice to see you. Oh, nice to see it's so nice to see you all. Y'all are so beautiful. Why have you turned your videos off this whole time? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs>
I was breastfeeding. That's all right. That's okay that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I got a picture on Facebook of me breastfeeding today. I literally did. <laughs> First time I've ever done that. So it's okay. Whatever. We've all been there. Me, my little ones were everywhere, so I had to hide in the car, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids are running all around your car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they've gone to the house because I've closed the doors. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your participation in the program as well um, and for being a part of this and for the beautiful energy that you have all brought into all of this. Uh, and we look forward to keeping you as a part of our sisterhood as well um, and keeping contact with all of you too so that we can continue being your cheerleaders as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Just to mention something, we'll have another meeting with the, the clients and their coaches. So we'll have a meeting with you and your coaches on Thursday, next Thursday, which is 19th. So feel free to join us on Thursday. Yeah, okay. and we, yeah. but I'll send you a link. I'll just send you another email with a link. And that will be the last one for the program. So um, we would love to see you there too. Hi, Consolata. Bye. Came in at the very end. Um, all right, so we're going to need to sign off. So thank you again, ladies, for being a part of this. Please let us know what we can do to continue supporting you and cheering you on in all of your amazingness. Um, and let us know also if you are interested in being a part of the next program um, or if you would uh, like to, or if you have anybody that you'd like to refer into the next program too. We would love to hear them too. Yeah, and I know some some of you, I don't know if you here physically, but some of you might continue with your coach and it's totally okay. And um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's totally between you and your coach. So go for it if you want yeah. to. All right. Have a beautiful rest of your day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for your time. It was so nice to see you all. Yeah.